If you're searching for how to make PCB with Altium, then search no more. Cause in this video, I will show you how to get from this to this. So from an idea to a PCB ready for manufacturing, I will discuss every step in the process of making your own professional PCB. So in this video, I will be using a simple lead chaser circuit, which uses 555 timer and 4017 counter. So let's get to it. We need to create a new project, new project, and I'll just name it LED chaser. Now in this project, we need to create a new schematic in which we will start to draw our schematic. So this schematic is quite simple. It has a 555 timer and 4017 counter. So the simplest way to put in components in your schematic is to go to manufacturers part search. Then you just search for what you want. So in this case, I want an 555 timer. So let's put it in and search. I can use, so I can use both dip and not dip. But in this case, I will use a dip so you can click to preview uh, the model and the pad for it. And you can see the suppliers from where uh, you can get this component. So like Mauser, Newark, DigiKey doesn't have in stock. It, but yeah, so here's our component. You can see it in 3D too. So let's put it in. You have to right click on the component and then place. If you want to rotate it, you press space and you can rotate. If you want to mirror it, you press X. So, okay, let's put it. Now we want our timer. Oh, sorry. Uh, we want our counter. C4017. Again, we want to get dip. Let's check it. Okay, so I think this one works just fine. Place. And put it in. Okay. If you have a not original version of Altium and you can go to manufacturer's parts search, you can simply find those parts on additional sites like Snap EDA or Ultra Librarian. So for example, let's find our timer and E555. And here you can see there are plenty of models of it from Texas Instruments like this one. And let's uh, just download the symbol and footprint we need for Altium. And here it is, we already downloaded. You can just simply drag the library of, of the component and its PCB pad into the Altium and just extract sources. Now you are already imported the component. The question is how do you find it? You just check it here and here you can see the NE555 and just drag the component into your schematic. To access the properties of the component, just double click on the component or click once and go to panels and properties. Here you can see the component and its footprint. This is how you can import uh, the component not from manufacturer's part search, but I will use components from manufacturer's part search. You can also find components not by searching them, but going through, like I'm uh, searching now for resistance, so I'm going to passive components. And here are the filters. You can just find what you need by checking the right filters. So I need one mega ohm resistors. And I would also prefer it if it would be not an SMD. Let's go with Excel. So I'd say this is quite alright. Right here. 
and now I need a 1 mega ohm potentiometer so okay so let's go to resistors and then check the potentiometer okay so as you can see 1 mega ohm does not have a model so this does not work for us well no matter let's just input this uh, SMD type potentiometer of 50 kilo ohms let's just place and okay rotate nice so now I'll just find the rest of the components okay I have found all my components so now it's time to give the components their names and values so connector will be a G1 and I am going to leave the connector common but for simple components like LEDs and resistors I am going to not show this value so like this resistor is R1 but I will not show its common however I will add a if there is not oh here it is the resistance so here shows a half a mega ohm but we need a one mega ohm so I'm just gonna change it by hand yeah so you can see R1 is one mega ohm so it's finally time to connect everything to connect the components you use the place wire and start connecting to place wire you just left click it and to stop placing it you just right click it and if, if you already have started putting it you simply left click and it stops as simple as that so I forgot one more component uh, I need uh, one more capacitor of 10 nanofarads and the circuit is done of course we can also put things like net label uh, this allows us to label the whole net if you keep your mouse a little bit on the net you can see that it has a basic name of default name of net c1 some sort of nonsense but now since i inputted this net label and i can change it to vcc you can see that this net now has name of vcc and in near future you will see that this helps quite a lot let's of course save let chaser and save so now let's start creating a our own new PCB so we create a PCB of course new file PCB and let's save it to give it a name and so it would be connected to our project so before starting our PCB let's just uh, check some of the options so go to project project options to clash generations and uncheck the generate rooms and component classes why am I doing this well because I won't use these things so unchecking them will just make it much simpler press ok and now it's time to update the PCB so design update PCB document let chaser .pcb dot and now we just check if there are any problems or something like that so validate changes so as you can see no problems at all and execute changes and you can simply close so here you can see all the components I'd say that's pretty nice let's start placing our components these yellow uh, wires show where what has to be connected so I would suggest uh, to start by putting the biggest not the biggest but I mean the whole brain of this operation in the middle and uh, putting every other component around it you can of course rotate these components by space now I'll place my components 
So I have placed my component. If you want to change the grid settings, you can just press G and here you can select the wanted grid. And I will select like one millimeter. If you want to write your own grid, you can just simply press Ctrl and G. And here I can see it gives me the window where I can just select my own grid. So I'll do like 10, well, not 100, 10 millimeters. Since I'm from Europe, I'm using millimeters. If you're from not Europe, you can simply use mil or whatever you prefer. So here you can uh, just change dots to lines, dots to lines and their color. Press OK. But before drawing, we need to do a few things. The most important part, rules. So go to design and rules. First of all, we need to check our clearance. So clearance is basically, it's the minimum distance between the components where you can put one near to each other. I, in my projects, mostly use 0.25 millimeters of course in the whole project you can change it anytime press apply as you can see I have a problem because I'm using American units I would like to use European units I'm just gonna change it so if you want to change it just nothing has to be checked then you go properties and then you go to bottom and you can see mills and Mimi and millimeters <laughs> sorry not Mimi <laughs> you go uh, mm and that's it so now i go again to design rules and as you can see 0 0.25 millimeter nice the next thing is in routing we go to width and here we are checking what kind of uh, tracks we will be leaving for like top layer and bottom layer since i'm using really really low currents like i don't know mostly i mean at most 100 milliamps so it really doesn't have to be big so i'll just check that the minimum 0.1 millimeter the preferred would be 0.2 and the max would be 0.2 okay why not of course if you want to add additional values for additional lines like you remember i called them uh, vcc and gnd i could simply do new rule rename it white pow like in power just go to this check custom query query builder and then we go belongs to net i'll check first vcc add another belongs to net gnd nice and i'll change it to or and yep that's it press ok and then check so now let's just apply and now let's go to routing vs these are the holes in our pcb like for getting the track from one side to another let's change it to like 0 0.5 millimeters you can always change this it really doesn't have to be so stationary via hole size would be 0 0.4 so apply and that is it so now just press ok and we can basically start drawing this design does not look really good i'm gonna change their positions a bit So before drawing, there is one more thing you have to check. You go to design and layer stack manager. And now you can see the whole layers. You can see the top overlay, top soldier, top layer, bottom layer. So let's just make this hole a little bit more thick. So let's make this one like 0.8. This is the middle dielectric the part. Then our top layer first of all check it let's just check like uh, c3 okay and give it a value of 0 0.1 millimeters and top solder this is ok 
okay for us and we need to just make it a little bit thicker 0 0.05 and I want to kind of get the 1.2 millimeter PCB so let's just do this one 1.9 and this is done you simply uh, press left click and save it save the stack up and you can simply close it now let's start drawing so to draw you simply check this in or you can simply do a control V which will automatically start uh, the drawing function and it automatically shows you where it has to be connected so you can always press tab and you can simply change things in these properties but I don't have to now so let's just start drawing so I'm gonna start draw here so okay I'm gonna try to connect everything like that it does look kind of bad if if it kind of looks bad you can just simply press on it uh, with the right click and just draw it with not draw it kind of correct it with your own hand and here you can see I have to go through the whole integral circuit bottom and I kind of want to avoid that so I can simply do that by by going to bottom layer so you press tab you choose bottom layer and you continue so whoop. And now you go to bottom layer yeah so if you want to see where you have to draw you can simply press control and left click the pad so if you are wondering why am I using such thin tracks well, it's simply because I use this side in which you can choose the current thickness and you can simply see how thick your tracks must be. And it simply has to be like 0.003 millimeter and I'm using 0.2 millimeters. So, I mean, it's enough. It's really enough. So that's why I am using such thin tracks. So let's get back to routing. So here is the first example where I can simply use that via through hole. So to put it, I can simply press plus. Here you can see it goes through the bottom layer now. And again, plus. And now I'm back in the top layer. And that's basically how you put vias here. And so finally everything is done you can see how much more space I still have this board is way way too big for this schematic so how do we change that well it's quite simple first you change grid then you can simply press 1 or go to project oh not not project view and board planning mode then you go to design and Edit board shape. And you drag your border shape as you want it to be. Okay, I'll leave a little bit more room. Press 2 to come back to uh, normal mode or just uh, go to view and layout mode. And we need to set origin right here. 
uh, origin is this thing so we go to edit origin set and just place it right here and that's simple as that to check the dimensions of your board you can simply go to to reports measure distance and from here to here and this 54 millimeters and from here to here 53 to remove them you simply press shift C now I see that it is not a full rectangle so I'll just change it a little bit by going again to edit mode and add board shape get one millimeter here go back to layout mode and set origin again so my board is 54 millimeters on 54 millimeters and you might ask how do I change the corners how do I make it look more round so you can simply do that by again pressing 1 and going to board planning mode and go to edit board shape and simply by dragging the corner you see this kind of thing happens but to change it you can press shift space and it now draws this kind of line if you want to change it again you press again shift space and now it draws an arc and I'm going to leave it at this shape because it's simpler to explain and show it when it's like this so now my board looks kind of scrappy so how do I change that well I can change it simply by placing a polygon pore a polygon pore will be like a copper layer which connects some tracks like if I want I can connect all of the VCC tracks or all of the ground tracks on top of this board I will place a polygon pore press tab you can select hatched none or solid I will do solid for this time you can remove that copper and optimize uh, optimize rotation and simply I select our uh, GND net ground net and then I place and I'm gonna place it from uh, four millimeters from each side uh, two three four okay one two three four okay one two three four one two three four nice now just right click right click and left click and you can see our creation you can see that it is connected to ground wherever there is ground our polygon pore is connected to it so let's try the same thing with uh, VCC bottom layer let's place polygon pore VCC solid and let's do it well one two three four and uh, failed but it doesn't really matter and right click here we have it's connected to VCC wherever there is contact connected to VCC it's connected you can select top layer and let's think what else do we need here so before inputting this bottom layer that connects our VCC I would kind of recommend putting some holes in corners for you know to bolt the PCB down somewhere so you just place via press tab and check the diameter and I would recommend to the diameter of the hole size of 2 millimeters and 2.5 it's okay so let's just place it about 3 millimeters from each side 1 2 3 1 2 3 again 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 
Okay, that looks much better. And now we can place the polygon pore. And we can even make it smaller. Nice, that looks much better. Now, you have this connector and you kind of need to know where the plus is. I mean, you have this point, but still, a plus would be better. So, you go to place, string, tab, check the top overlay layer, and go to plus. And you just simply place it. Plus here, and tab, and minus in the other side. Like this. And it looks much better. Well, it looks like it's done. But you could input a few more things to make it look more professional. First of all, you have to show that this is your board. So you can simply do that. Go to top overlay and place a graphic. And I'm going to place it for now outside the, uh, the PCB so I could control it more and just Ch uh, place it from your computer. It has to be PNG or that kind of format. And open. Yes. And this is what I got. And I can simply put it somewhere on this PCB. And I'm going to put it somewhere here. Oh yeah. That's nice. And now the last part in this PCB is Check if it has any flaws, if it has any rule violations or some sort of problems. So you do that by going to design rule check and ru run design rule check. And here, in my case, I have a lot of these, like it shows you I have 12 rule violations and it shows every rule violation in here where something was violated so like silk to solder mass clearance silk to silk clearance so i can simply check that again by uh, going to pcb rules and violations and i can simply double click on that rule and it shows me where the problem is so here it's too close to this so i can simply <laughs> drag it a, a little bit away just need to change my grid, check it and drag it a little bit away and the problem is away. I mean, there's no more problem. Again, then I have this one and it shows that it is too near to this thing. So I can simply double click on the problem and go to silk solder mass clearance and change it. Well, it's not the uh, correct way to deal with this problem but it uh, it really is not a bad way and you simply you can see that it has to be uh, it needs to be lesser than uh, 0 0.1 millimeter and you can simply change it here I'm gonna simply change it to 0 0.1 and okay and these problems are still here because I didn't update the rule check so Again, I go to Tools, Design Rule Check, rule, rule and Design Check, and you can see I have zero problems. Well, you thought this video was over, but there is a few more things you can do. First of all, to make the borders more clear, you can place a line on them. Press Tab, and it's gonna be a copper line of bottom and top layer so i'm gonna use a line of a 0 0.5 millimeter i have a grid on 0 0.25 millimeter and let's draw i click two times because it wouldn't as you see it wouldn't do this kind of thing So as you can see, it shows me there is a violation here. I can simply check this violation with uh, pressing uh, right click, going to violations and with constraint. With, and I can see 
Oh, so here was the maximum 0.2. So I can simply change that by writing 0. 0. I mean like 5 maximum. And okay. And here we don't have any more problems. So let's do the same for the bottom layer. Place, line. And now we have metalized corners. This board now is metalized. And I haven't told you this, but you can check your board by pressing free and going into 3D view. And you can see how good this board looks. Oh yeah. I'd say that's that's looking very good. Now I'm thinking, this board looks so good. Why shouldn't I just manufacture it? And this is where Gerber files come in. To manufacture this board, you need to export it. You go to Edit, Fabrication Outputs, and Gerber files. I'm using mill millimeters here because I'm European. You go to Layers and select Used On. In Drill Drawing, you can connect, uh, select this plot all your drill pairs and you leave everything as it is. You export this and you have your Gerber files. Well, I could say this looks pretty good. However, you need one more thing and that is NC Drill files. So you go back to your PCB file, fabrication outputs and go to NC Drill files. Again, I'm using millimeters and you just leave everything as it is and press OK. OK and now you have your own drill drawings. Now the question is where can I find all these files? Well, you remember this lead chaser folder I had? You have the, uh, in here you have project outputs for lead chaser and here are all the gerb all the Gerber and NC drill files. So for manufacturing, you just need to zip them and you can simply go to your uh, PCB manufacturer. Uh, I'm using GLC PCB because it's cheap and it's pretty good and you just drag and drop the whole zip file. And finally, there it is, the whole PCB. So, that's it. Thanks for watching and I hope you will consider subscribing.